This one is for all you perfectionists out there. The past year or so, I ended up creating a lot of bad art and also improving a lot, at least for me. This video is telling you why you should be doing the same. Let's get into it. So let's say you've had this big grand idea brewing in your head for a while and you just can't wait to get it onto paper. You can just imagine it. It's going to look so cool and awesome and it's going to be perfect. Let's say it's this ferocious snarling tiger pouncing right at you and you finally decide that today is the day you are going to do this thing. And so you get out your paper and your pencil and you put down the first strokes and then you realize your perspective and anatomy are both way off. You don't know the first thing about good composition or how to pull off a color scheme and your tiger is already looking more goofy than intimidating and you don't even know how you're going to tackle the fur. You have two options. Either you can keep on going and make a horrendous piece of art, or you can save it for later, you know, when you're better at everything. I'll tell you what I would have done when I was younger. I would have turned around and bolted, but that's not really a great way to respond to that. The best way to respond is to stop worrying, just get to it, and make bad art. Now. I'm not saying hypothetical you should tackle this hypothetical piece with all of your weak points smushed into this monster of an artistic endeavor, but I am saying that you should be tackling your weak spots in art. And unfortunately, that involves bad art. A lot of bad art. So what exactly do I mean when I say bad art? For me, I mostly do realism. So, let's say I did a piece and it turned out looking very stylized. Well, I might consider that a failure. Where someone who had that goal all along, they would consider that success. And it isn't that they hate realism or I just despise stylized drawings because I actually love them. It would simply be because my intent for the piece wasn't realized, whereas theirs was. And that's what I mean when I say bad art. I'm not talking about something that's objectively bad. I'm talking about something that does not reach its intended goal. But that leads to the question. If bad art is something that didn't reach its goal, why in the world would anyone want to make bad art? Well, simply because it's the only way to improve. Let me explain. When I was a little kid, I loved drawing, but my skill level just wasn't up to par with what I wanted, and so I did it very rarely. Sometimes I would forget how frustrating my lack of skill made me feel, and I would try drawing something, usually something very ambitious, like something from my imagination. And let's be generous and say I got as far as putting pencil to paper, and that's very generous. But even if I did that, I wouldn't end up finishing it. I would realize that I couldn't make the perfect piece of art that I envisioned, and so I would just give up. Today, the only, only, only reason I am at the skill level I am is because I took art lessons and I had to complete assignments. Thank you, school. Without it, I would still be in the same place I was then, too afraid of making bad art to ever do anything. And that's the thing about bad art. I mean, who in their right mind would want to make it on purpose? But maybe we should be. I mean, not making bad art for the sake of bad art. But we have to put ourselves out there to improve in our weaknesses, and that's basically a recipe for bad art. The real problem is not just that we don't like bad art because it's not fun to look at, but it's because we're perfectionists. At least, a lot of us are. We're so afraid of not making the perfect piece of art and proving to ourselves we're not where we hoped we were. 
But the fact is, if you only ever do things in your comfort zone, you're not going to grow. If you grow at all, it will be very small and you will be seriously limiting yourself. So go out there, make bad art. Of course, that's easier said than done. I mean, even if you have done that and you are making bad art, it can feel very frustrating and overwhelming and you can feel very lost. So what is the best way to make bad art without having to deal with all of that? Or at least having it under control? Well, the best thing you can do if you haven't already, is to make an overarching goal for your art. Where exactly do you want your art to be? Do you want it to be more realistic, looser, more stylized? Uh, do you want to be more adventurous with your color? How is your composition? What about your anatomy or your perspective? Whatever it is, write it down and try to be specific. And then figure out how you're going to reach that goal. It doesn't have to be anything complicated. It could be as simple as practicing that thing over and over and over again. But for the best results, I recommend doing a little bit of research. One of the things I like to do, and I know many other artists do this as well, is collect art and artists that are at the level in that particular area that you want to be. It just helps you visualize your goal better. It's also very useful uh, to study that art and figure out why it works so well in that area and what about it appeals to you. There's also a bunch of other great resources. There's YouTube, there's Google, there's your local library. There's so much free information out there and some paid stuff too if you're interested in that. One of the great things about having an overarching goal, other than the clarity that it gives you, is that it helps you get into the right mindset for improvement. And mindsets can feel like this motivational mumbo jumbo, but they really are actually quite useful. Remember that mindset I had back when I was a kid? That's how much a mindset can make or break your success. So it actually is very, very practical. I was listening to a podcast on the subject the other day where they were talking about bad mindsets artists can have and how to fix those. I found it very helpful. Uh, I'll link it for you if you're interested in checking it out. Another tip I have is to think of art that has a high risk of failure as throwaway art. You don't have to literally throw anything out. I know I can't stand to do that. I'm a bit of a hoarder when it comes to art. but have that mindset. Think of the art as a stepping stone to getting to your goal, not something that's supposed to be amazing in and of itself. That takes a lot of pressure off you and helps you not being so attached to making perfect art. Another tip I have for you is don't just make bad art. As great as improving is, it can feel very frustrating, like I've said, and it's good to have a balance of things that challenge you and of things that you can really enjoy doing and not really worry about. And of course that's going to vary a lot from person to person. Some people just like having challenges and they find doing the things that they are better at pretty boring. And others thrive better on having more things they're comfortable with and that's okay. Just do what works for you. Don't stress yourself out about it. Also, let go of your criticisms sometimes. I'm very, very rarely 100% happy with peace. And that's fine. It helps me know where I can improve. But I don't let that take away from me enjoying the process or even the product. Even if it's not perfect. Even if I think of it as a complete failure. And not everything has to be made with a certain goal behind it. Sometimes you can just do things and see where they take you, and that's perfectly fine as well. And really, as artists, we can't be afraid of making bad art. We're going to be doing it all the time, and that's not an insult to you or me or anyone else. It's simply that our goals are always so much higher than we are. That's how we improve, like I've been saying for the entire video. But because we're always going to be making bad art, we might as well make something out of it, turn it into something useful. Don't let it be something bad. Use it to your benefit. 
Be a friend to your weaknesses and your failures and let those push you towards success. You're going to be making bad art. So, make it worthwhile. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please comment down below. What are some ways that you're improving your art right now or you want to improve your art? One of the things I've been doing to improve is doing this watercolor piece. It's not quite done and it's been quite a challenge. I'm not really used to working in watercolors. Um, I haven't touched them that much since I was a kid and back then I was pretty bad at them. So this is what I have so far. Um, it's kind of scary. It's not anywhere close to being finished, unfortunately. Um, my one condolence is that I'm also probably going to be putting gouache and colored pencil on this. So if I make any horrendous mistakes, I can sort of cover them up. So that's, that's quite a comforting thing to know. Um, if you're not from my blog, I have it linked. I post there two times a week and you can see my art. Um, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you like. Bye-bye.